Now that we learned how to find the GCF of monomials, we are actually going to go ahead and factor out the GCF. So steps to do that is we're going to first find the GCF. Second, we're going to divide all terms by the GCF. So kind of going back to what we did in 7.3b. And then for that last step, we're going to put the GCF outside of the parentheses and everything else inside. So let's go through some examples. So first one, I have 12x to the fourth plus x squared. And I want to factor this. So again, factoring, that just means I want to rewrite this so that it's the factors what multiplies to get to 12x to the fourth plus x squared. 8x squared. So first step, I need to find the GCF. So I'm going to look at the coefficients. I'm going to start with my smaller one, 8, and write those factors. So that's 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. And then for 12, I'm looking, I'm going to start over of my factors in 8 and go from highest to lowest to see which one is going to go into 12. So I'm going to start with my highest 8. 8 does not go into 12 so it's not 8. 4, 4 does. 3 times 4. And then I need to find the GCF of my variables. Well it's going to be the one with the smaller exponent which is x squared. I did my first step. I found the GCF. Second step is I want to divide all terms by the GCF. So I'm going to divide 12x to the fourth by 4x squared and 8x squared. Then I'm going to put the GCF outside of the parentheses. So I'm going to have parentheses here and everything else inside. And so my divided terms are going to go in here. So 12 divided by 4, I get 3. x to the 4th divided by x squared. Remembering our quotient property, I want to subtract those exponents. So 4 minus 2, I get 2. 8 divided by 4, I get 2. And then x squared divided by x squared, when I subtract those exponents, I get 2 minus 2, which is 0. And anything to the zero power is just one, so those just cancel out. And so I get this answer. And that is our factored expression. Something nice with this is you could check your work. Because with factoring, I know if I multiply these together, I should get my original expression. And so when I multiply 4x squared times 3x squared, 4 times 3, I get 12 x squared times x squared, I get x to the fourth, since I add those exponents. And then 4x squared times 2, I get 8x squared. And I see I do end up with my original expression, so I'm good. Okay, let's try another one. So now I have 28x to the fourth y minus 42x squared y cubed. So I want to start with my smaller number, 28 and write out those factors. So I have 1 times 28, 2 times 14, 3 doesn't go into 28, but 4 does. And then I want to write out the factors of 42. So I'm going to start with my bigger number, 28. 28 doesn't go into 42, so it's not that, but 14 does. So 14. The smaller exponent for my x's is x squared. The smaller exponent for my y's is y. And then I'm going to divide each term by my GCF. So 28 divided by 14, I get 2. x to the fourth divided by x squared, I get x squared y divided by y, I just get 1. Carry down my minus sign. 42 divided by 14, I get 3. x squared divided by x squared, I just get 1. 
y cubed divided by y, that's really 3 minus 1, and I get y squared. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. I want you to try and do number 3. So the answer you should have gotten for number 3 was 7n times 2n squared plus 1. For this very last one, it's a little bit different. It has three terms, but that's okay. We're still going to go through the same process. So I'm going to start with my numbers. So I know my factors for 6, 1, 6, 2, and 3. I'm going to see if 6 goes into 12. And it does. 2 times 6. And then 6 also goes into 30. 5 times 6. So my GCF here starts with 6. My smallest exponent for my y's is my 3. So I have y cubed. So now I'm going to divide every term by my GCF. So 6 times 6, I get 1. y cubed divided by y cubed, I also get 1. And so this is just going to be a 1. Minus 12 divided by 6 is 2. y to the 5th divided by y cubed is y squared. 30 divided by 6, I get 5. And then y cubed.